Hello everybody, thanks for joining us here for this special edition of Backstage 360. I'm here at the Neighborhood Cemetery for a graveyard chat with Michael Del Pizzo. Whoa. I'm Brenda Starr, thanks for joining us. How you doing? Good, how you doing Brenda? Yeah, thanks for joining me for a graveyard chat. Of course. Right? So, let's start with your name, right? Say your last name for me. Del Pizzo. Del Pizzo. So that is not a uh, three name, that's not a middle name like Ronnie James Dio. Oh no, no, my middle name is James. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. so it is like Ronnie James yeah. Dio, but yeah. the Del Pizzo. But yeah, I wanted to point that out in case somebody thought you were using your middle name. Oh no. That is your, your last name and that's your birth name. Yep. Yeah, you have no stage name. But I just tell people my name is Michael, that's what they know me by generally. Not many people call me my last name, but I put it on the record, you know, like even though even when we wore, wore the makeup, I wasn't trying to hide who I was. Mm hmm Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, Jabu, that's not his birth name. No. Right? Yeah. His, his name is, uh, well, he doesn't really like people to know his name per se. Uh, he's the ex exact opposite of me. He enjoys his privacy. But on the same token, he has all these friends on social media, and I have none because I don't accept anybody, but he accepts everybody. So it's like... For someone that wants to be private, he's friendly, and for someone that doesn't care if people know me, I'm not. Well, that makes perfect sense in the sunflower yeah, dead world, yeah, exactly. right? Because there, yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was beginning to think maybe he was part of the witness protection yeah, plan, right. no, you know, with the no. makeup and everything. No, no he no. got cleared he's, on those he's charges. <laughs> no, he's a good boy generally. He's a, but that name came about like 20 years ago. Did you ever see the movie Major League? Remember that movie? No. Charlie Sheen gonna... about baseball. Well, there was this guy on the team, and, and he prayed to this god called Joe Boo. And, and can I curse in this interview? Yes. No. no. Fuck yeah. All right. Fuck, all right. <laughs> so in the movie, he can't. He keeps striking out, and every time he strikes out, he looks at his bat and he goes, "Fuck you, Joe Boo." So we were. I watched the movie, and we were rehearsing in another band years and years ago. And I looked at Jim, and I said, "Fuck you, Joe Boo." And the drummer thought I said Jabu. He's like, "What the hell is a Jabu? What the fuck is a Jabu?" I said, "I was from the movie." He goes, and he, and he started calling Jim Jabu. His real name is Jim, kinda. And then everyone in LA started calling him Jabu. And it was such a natural nickname that you have to take it, right? It doesn't mean anything. You just have to go with it. Wow. So now he's Jabu. Wow. So Anthony is another fake name. No, Anthony's his real name. Sorry, dude. Oh. <laughs> He's also a James, like me. I'm Michael James. He's Anthony James. But his father was Anthony, so they called him Jim, so they wouldn't be confused. Oh, okay. Now it all makes sense. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mystery yeah. solved. I know. It's a, right? The We're mysteries like... of the universe. <laughs> two idiots from Philadelphia. Ah, uh, okay. All right. But, um, okay. So you and Jabu have... <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Um, you guys became from... You guys have been friends for a long time and came since, out from... Since we were five. Five? Did yeah. you meet in kindergarten? No, we, we actually met in the summertime at a swimming pool, and I think he was trying to drown me. Uh, he knew the future, so he was trying to cut me out early. But yeah, no, I think in a swimming pool. Wow. That's, that's Weird, awesome. Weird, right? Before there was any music involved. In fact, I remember when we started getting into music, and he walked into the pool years later. He was probably about nine or ten, and he had a guitar in his hand. And I was like, what are you doing with that? And he's like, well, I'm taking guitar lessons. I go, well, that's lame. Let's go play in the pool or something. You know, I had no interest in it at that young age, but wow. he was already, you know, pl playing Wild Thing and all these songs he was learning. So, wow, awesome! Look at him now. Look at him now. <laughs> so then you guys went to your first concert together, right? Yeah, yeah. And do you want to tell us what that was? It well, we uh, since he was taking lessons from a guy in the band uh, who did all the guitar solos on the first Cinderella record. His mm -hmm. guy's name was Barry Benedetta. Um, he was all into learning about Ingve Malmsteen, right? And I saw that Ingve Malmsteen was playing in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. And he was opening up for this guy named Dio. And we didn't know who Dio was. We were little kids, like 12 or 13. But I said, you want to go see Ingve Malmsteen? Our moms can drive us and stuff, and we'll meet and go see it. He goes, yeah. And then we went and saw Ingve, and he was great. And then this D little Dio guy came on, and he was amazing right and we were like whoa this is really cool like our first concert didn't know who it was we were like right up front in front of the speakers like oh my god it's cr awesome wow. awesome and that was it after that it was all music yeah very cool yeah dio has that effect on a lot of people yeah he does yeah, yeah. awesome so then you guys came when did you guys started sunflower dead in 2012 2012 we started that was the first album yep, yep. so hand me that album i actually have uh can i see that there 
This is self-titled, Sunflower Dead. Yeah, the, with the vinyl, oh, that cover was only on the vinyl version. The vinyl is purple. Is on it? This. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. That's right. Yep. Um, so yeah, I've seen another cover for this album. Why? What's the story behind well, that? The CD came with um, our picture. It was like all white with us standing there with the makeup, and we had makeup at that time. And then when we decided to release the vinyl, we were kind of like. Let's do something special. So we had this artist named Monster Man who does a lot of stuff, I think, for Marvel and whatnot, and he just drew us like that. And we were like, yeah, that's cooler, way cooler than we look. <laughs> so we're like, that'll work. And then, you know, it was, you know, you added the accordion and the spikes on my jacket that I had. And, and that's actually the original five members that started the band. There's Louis on bass. And everybody thought he was like in the in the SS with that red um, <laughs> armband. But what's funny is he's, he's Mexican, so I don't think he could be in the SS, you know, a Nazi, <laughs> but people thought that. I actually had people come up to me on our first tour when he was in the band and said, oh, you guys are cool, you're racist. I was like, the hell we are, we are not. <laughs> we are not, we are all about everyone. And I was not friends with that person anymore. Oh, so anyways. Oh but that's all the original members and then um after that first tour louis left because he realized the road wasn't for him and uh it was all good it? we're still friends with him he's great and um he actually toured with buckethead he played bass for buckethead for a lot of years so um and the rest of the guys were in the band we replaced louis with lats and for the next four years and through our second album it was that lineup with the makeup still Mm -hmm. So yeah, so these this one and the second one are on Bloody Bat Records, which is our own label that we started. Yeah, yep. and you know what? It's so funny how everybody interprets everything different. I was thinking of Bloody Bat, like like the animal, like the mammal, wings, like yeah. a vampire. But then looking at this, no, it's the it's baseball bats, like we beat you to death. Really. Right, that right. Was, that was the idea. Yeah, that's a little more scary, actually. Yeah, right? that was kind of the idea. Like yeah, when people thought it was a bat, like a harmony, we're like, no, it's not the. Uh, well, right. it's not the monsters like it's bats like good fellas like we will beat you down right so bats. Yeah. yes yes so the album has this cover and the cd has a different one yeah. is that what totally. i'm understanding totally. now yeah. okay awesome 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 so the other one hand me the shirt so we can show we can talk about the next album which is uh here you want me to hold that yeah so, this is a ripoff yeah what do you mean a ripoff well, oh from just kiss destroyer yeah, it's rock and roll over from Kiss. <laughs> yeah. And this is our second album, It's Time to Get Weird. And I'll tell you how this came about because it was not a choice of ours. So, when we were on tour for the first record, um, we were saying, oh, we should do some fun stuff, flyers, and, and do some homages to bands we love. And then uh, Jabu and Jimmy, our drummer at the time who loves Kiss, Jimmy's in love with Kiss, was like, well, let's do rock and roll over with our faces in it. Just for a flyer, it'd be fun. And we were like, yeah, that'd be cool. And we totally forgot about it. And then we got Monster Man, that guy who did that album cover. We're like, draw us a new album cover for this Time to Get Weird record. And um, he did. He drew us his album cover. And none of us liked it, including him. He was like, I hate it. We're like, well, why'd you give it to us? But So he goes, but I have another idea. Hold on. And then he ships us back this, the <laughs> thing we were talking about six months earlier on tour. And we're like, well, it must be the way to go. And it looks rad as hell, so let's do it. And we went with that, not to rip off Kiss, but just to show what an influence they were to us in our look. Um, not musically, but just in the look. And so, you know, of course, we got a little flack for it, but we didn't get sued for right. Kiss. Right, I was um, going to say, did Gene, <laughs> you didn't get a letter from I'm, Gene's I'm, attorney? I'm pretty sure he saw it. Uh, he I know just knew our you manager, had no money. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, he wasn't going to get anything. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was cool. I actually love, I love that album cover, the rock and roll over, and this. And then after we did this, I've noticed about two or three other bigger bands have went and copied our idea to do their version of rock and roll over. And I go, wait a minute, now you're biting from us who bite it off a kiss. So let's cut this. We're the second original. So you're going to sue them. We're going to sue them. Because you need the money. Yeah, because we're broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Why not, yeah. right? But that was the second As long album. as you don't make money before, you know, why those KISS members are still alive. Because exactly. then they might come after yeah. you. Yeah, well, that's right? why we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take this record off the shelves. And right, right, right. So this is a collector album. Yeah. If you and got this it. album features, uh, the song is Time to Get Weird had Jonathan Davis from Korn yes. on it. Yes. Which was really cool that he sang. He did. It's a duet with me and him. It's not like he just came in and sang a bunch of vocals like in the chorus. Like he literally, we went back and forth. Yeah. So that's it's cool. a really cool song. Yeah. 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 So, so the uh, the standout song on this. Um, there's a couple of them. One wasted. Wasted. So, yeah. That's... So I want to ask you about that. What that song is a is a 
about because um, it says it's wasted and it's uh, slithering down your thighs, right? Right, something like that. What, what's going on well, over there? Wasted is about like so. When we started Sunflower Dead, I've been doing music a long time, and so Jaboon, so do all of us. And um, it, basically, wasted was about just chasing your dreams and giving up and sacrificing everything and losing everything in your life that's important to you, including your health, your sanity, your finances, to just keep going after this dream. You know, and um, that's what it's about. It's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you're wasting everything. And that's what it's about. It's not about, it's not about drinking beers. Right. But <laughs> yeah. some people may interpret that. I've and seen them fine. at your show. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. right. But you know what? That's the beauty yeah. is that everybody can interpret things differently. Totally. You know, especially if you leave that room for interpretation, right? right? That becomes an art. It does. It yeah. Does. And yeah. Then, you know, there's some times where I see drunk people in the audience and I'll change the lyric to, you're wasted. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, but that's what it was yeah. about. It was about basically wasting your life which is not a waste when you're the artist, but at the end of the day, when you keep losing, you start going, man, this is a waste. Mm -hmm. So that's what that song was about. And the whole slithering between your thighs is basically, it's kind of like a reference to the devil, which is the dream, you know, the thing you want. It's like, you know, you can almost touch the sun. You can almost get it, but you can't because that devil is just, you know, dangling what you want with a fishing line, but keeps pulling it back, you know? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could be interpreted as about a erectile dysfunction, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. wasted just, you know, yeah. 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 Just all interpretation. Yeah. I'm just, that, I'm just I've never saying. Heard about interpretation, just but saying. That doesn't make sense, too. So maybe they could put it on like a Viagra commercial, you know, have like, hey. a, like an old guy or a young guy who can't get it up. Right. And then boom, it's, it's dangling and it's just, it's wasted. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we have to mention every breath you take. If you have not heard that version, Sunflower Dead's version of every breath you take, you have to. It's just insane. It gets more intense and more intense, you know, the further you get into the song. And uh, it's, you know, it's, ama it's, oh, it's thank amazing. You. Thank you. I first heard that song in Hot Topic. I was shopping with my daughter. Oh, really? And I heard it would, they, you know, they play cool music yeah. in there and different stuff. And I was like, what is this? I left the store not knowing who it was, and I didn't figure it out until, um, you know, after this, when this album was coming out, right. and I met you. And it's interesting that we're here in a graveyard, because I met you through death. Right, that's right. At uh, the Duke Collins Memorial. Yeah, Duke. What a good yeah, person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and he brought together so many people, yeah. you know, and all, and all of that. But that's, you know, that's... Uh, that's how I met you. So we got to say hi to Mama Duke because um, we're we're She's in that wonderful. week of you know yep, we're in that time. Anniversary, four year anniversary was last week, I believe. Or this yeah. Week. yeah, yeah, so it's it's singing. tough. It's mm -hmm. it's tough. No, you it know, never, it, it never it, yeah goes away. You know what I'm saying? It never goes away. It's a sh yeah. it's it's sad and a shame. But Duke was a great person, and you know if, if you were at the memorial or at his um, funeral, you, you saw how much he was loved. Oh, he might not have known funny. it, maybe, but he was. Yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right, you ready to slip into coma? I am. I want to give it a thorough examination. Let's do it. This album is a masterpiece. Uh, you guys, it's just awesome. I have it right here. Oh, look at so, that. <laughs> so there it is. I'm going to actually get out the lyric sheet. Hold that for a sec. Um, so. Do you, what do you want to say about this while I'm getting out the lyric sheet? Do you want to tell us about some of the changes and some, what's new with Some Flower Dead? Well, let's see. So, what happened was, the story of Coma came about like this. We were touring, it's time to get Weird Record. We had toured a lot, you want your microphone back? Yes, thank you. <laughs> we had mic. toured a lot on that record, and um, we would actually started writing this record probably in the beginning of 2017. We thought we were done touring. And um, we got offered another tour for the spring of 2017. So we took a break from writing, did that tour, started out great, ended up terrible. We left the tour because there were some bad vibes with the band we were on tour with. So instead of bashing their faces into the fucking ground, we decided to be adults and go home. So you left early. We, with two shows left, we decided to drive home and not go wow. to jail. Wow. Because they pissed us off. Wow. And we were pissing them off. But they piss us off first. And, and music isn't about that. It shouldn't be about, like, feeling like you're in high school and you want to fight and all that shit because violence is nonsense, right? But that's where we were, and we are like, you know what? If we're to this point, it's time to just walk away. Yeah. So we did. 
and it's all good vibes now. We wish them the best and everyone associated the best. But at that point, we had to leave. So we came home. We wrote 20 demos for this record. We didn't know what it was going to be called. We didn't have a rhythm section. Our drummer quit. Our bass player quit. In fact, the last two tours for the time to get weird record, we did with fill-in guys. But we had the makeup, so it worked fine, right? Um, but there was just three of us, me, Jabu, and Jamie, two guitar players and me. We didn't know what we were going to do. We didn't know how we were going to do it. So we just said, let's just write a bunch of songs and record a record. So that's what we did within the next three months. We demoed 20 songs. We sent them to one of the producers on his Time to Get Weird record. On that record, we worked with Mikey Doling from Snot, who did a great job on the Weird record, and Dave Fortman, who did Evanescence and Slipknot and Godsmack. But on this record, we only wanted one producer because we wanted to focus. We knew we needed to focus, so we worked with just Dave on this record. And so we sent him the songs, and Dave goes, wow, these songs, this is a different Sunflower Dead. This is a new beast. This is something, like, darker and more serious and not trite, and it's just... It's just, you guys have taken a turn in, in your creativity. So um, he came out in August of 2017 to California, lived with us for a month. We recorded the record here in Southern California. We had no clue what we were going to do with it. We used uh, the bass player from Ugly Kid Joe played bass on the record. Um, the bass player, or the drummer from uh, Downset played drums on the record because um, we didn't have a band. <laughs> and um, after we tracked it, we knew we had the best thing we'd ever done by accident because normally when you use studio guys and it's not a band effort when you're a band mm -hmm. it starts to lack mm -hmm. and we put we were so angry and frustrated and upset while writing this record especially me um, over you know how the the record cycle of weird went ended up I was a little frustrated with how we were being perceived because we were wearing the makeup at that point um, I didn't feel like people were seeing past the image. They weren't taking us seriously. They couldn't, they couldn't see or hear that I had a, a bitch and guitar player who had great musical ideas. They could only see clowns. Um, and I guess there's that old saying, you know, people only hear what they see. So all they could see with, hear with us was what they saw was clowns. And I felt we had more to offer. So while we were writing that record, Coma, I brought it up to the guys, maybe on the next cycle we should ditch the makeup ditch all that stuff and just let it be and we decided after we wrote the songs and listened to them that we 100% did not need anything but the music on this album mm -hmm. um, so we got we recorded it we were like wow well, okay this is something special didn't realize how special it would be the only thing I knew is while I was doing the record um, I was going through a hard time because the guys had asked me instead of writing lyrically like metaphor based which is something I've always done they said, asked me to just write lyrically straight up what I thought. You know, no bullshit. Don't allude to anything. Just give it. And I, I didn't. I went to. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go to those places. You know, because it's one thing to allude to something. It's another thing to just say it. And I didn't really want to go to those places because I knew if I did, I would have to go down into a, a depression, which is what I did during this record. And if you follow me on Facebook, you know I did because I was really upset and complaining and bitching the whole time about how upset I was. It was funny, but I was really not in a good spot. And But when it came time to record these songs, I just I let it all out, and it was uh, fruitful to the end result. Um, so we recorded 11. There's nine on the record, so we saved two. Um, we still didn't have a band. We didn't have a record label. We didn't have a booking agent anymore, which is which we lost after the last tour from the Weird Album. Uh, we basically were just three guys with songs recorded <laughs> really well. Wow. So we uh, started looking. Well, we didn't even start looking for members. Jamie sent the songs to a couple people he knew, and one of them was Christian Oldie Wolbers from the original bassist from Fear Factory. And Christian goes, you guys have a bass player? And Jamie's like, no. He goes, dude, this record is amazing. And that's his words, not mine. He goes, I love this record. It shows so much growth. I want to be a part of this. So we're like, you're in. Because Christian actually produced our first record. Yeah, he, I, he worked on that, right? Yeah. yeah. So we were like, yeah, dude, Christian's amazing. You know, he's the coolest guy. So we're like, yeah, you're in. And we got our drummer without trying anyone out because he was friends with our producer, Dave Fordman, and he called Dave just to hang out with Dave while we were doing the record. And he came down while we were in the studio, and, was, and when he was in there, he was listening to these songs going, who is this band? And he goes, do you guys need a drummer? And we were like, yeah. 
And he had, you know, he had he had been in a band called um, Downplay, which became Star Set, and they're doing really well out there now. And then he also toured with Red Sun Rising, and they're doing really well. So we were like, all right, cool. We tried them out. We're like, you're in, done. We got a band. Didn't even have to try. It was like they were dropped from, you know, the sky to be in this band. And then um, we had this record. We didn't even know what to call it. So our manager goes, call it Coma. And we're like, why? He goes, I don't know. It sounds cool. We're like, sold. It has no meaning. It means nothing. It's not like, is it an acronym when you have letters that stand for something? It's not an acronym. I don't know why it's spaced out C space O. So I don't know. It just, we're like, it's perfect. I don't know why, but it's perfect. There's not a song called Coma. There's not a lyric called Coma. Just the, it just is. Well, if you think about it with Coma, you're... You're not dead, right. but you're not fully alive. Yeah. It's it's sort of like a in between that's what, stage. That, that's what this record was like, like in between, like oh my god, <laughs> we're like half done, but not. And um, and then we started the process of, of shopping this record to labels, and nobody wanted it. Nobody would listen. We would get emails back from labels going, nope, won't even press play, won't even listen to it. Wow. Well, fuck you too. They missed out. Well, fuck you too. And I have those emails, and I, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to uh, hold on to that kind of grudge, but there were such rude emails. I remember who said what and, wh and when they said it, because I'm just like, man, you won't even press play to even listen? Wow. They're fuck arrogant you. fuckers, man. Fuck you. So, <laughs> EMP came uh. across, which is David Ellison's label. Yeah. They were into it. We said, let's do it. We signed a really fair deal that works in both of our both of ours favor and uh we picked a release date and it came out you know nice so yeah yeah awesome and it's doing really well so far right do you you want to um share uh, how victim is done it's yeah. that's went out to radio already and and uh you know, well, tell us how it's doing the first thing was we took the makeup off for this record 100 mm -hmm. and um that was received by all of our previous fans with no issue whatsoever I would say maybe there was three people that emailed me personally to tell me they didn't like mm -hmm. it. Well, you know, I don't think you're giving the fans credit enough because you say that they only saw the makeup, but I don't think so. I, don't I think they, I think they enjoyed the whole experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, I honestly thought before you told us this that the reason you took off the makeup is just that you did it. We, you experienced it for about five years of having the makeup right. and everything, and it was a really cool experience, mm -hmm. you know, to be there, but. Maybe to keep going that way, would it would have got boring it would, for you? Yeah, for you. You know what I mean? We're, we're the type and, of band that just is always. Everything we do has got to be in the moment. We try not to write before it's time to write. We always are writing something, but we don't really know where we're going until we're there because art is a reflection of how you feel at the time, right? Or or the previous mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. you know. And um, for us, it's like, well, we were at a spot point where we did the makeup, and and it didn't feel right anymore, so we just took it off. Yeah. That's and, and I think our fans always could see through the makeup and see that we had some viability. But I, I think there was a lot of people that wouldn't even give us a shot. They wouldn't even press play or, on this You're record. talking about the industry people, then, yes. not the fans. Yes. The fans, yeah. yeah, the fans love it. You yeah, know, exactly. the evil seeds. The evil seeds are self Lovely. But, yeah. yeah. Come on with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, but, you know, what we did was we kind of let it out that we weren't going to have the makeup little by little on social media. We started put, and we never, like, we would always go out and talk to people without makeup. It's not like we were, yeah. we were like ghosts who was about mystery, which is awesome. You know, that band is great for that. We weren't about that. We were just entertaining people with the makeup on stage. But um, we started letting out, you know, getting up there and doing Facebook Lives just like this, you know, mm -hmm. and then putting up pictures, photo shoots just like this. And people were like, what are you guys doing? Where's the makeup? And then by the time we released the video for Victim last August, it was like, oh, the makeup's off. All right. Then they're like, well, is it really off or is it off for the song? We're like, nope, it's off. But um, we released Victim to radio in, you know, the fall of last year. And about a month ago, it peaked and it got to number 34 on Billboard and 34 on Media Base Active Rock, which is our highest charting so far on radio. Nice. And we were really stoked on it. Um, so it was received really well for a band that hadn't been on radio for about a year and a half to two years. It was kind of starting over, rebranding the band, reintroducing ourselves. A change of sound, the record's way more serious. Mm -hmm. um, not metaphorical, it's, it's, the lyrics are straight to the point about my frustrations of things um, and uh, it was received well and Victim has now set us up to release a second single which we just shot the video for called Turn Away which is to me the epitome 
of what we do. That is the best of what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. So how much of the lyrics here is real and how much is just fantasy? Uh, there's no fantasy on this album. Uh, the only song that is not fantasy, but I took a little liberty with was Savior. Um, but I just had met a, that's the only song that was more of like a, me kind of expressing people I had met that are dealing with things like addiction or enjoying being treated badly, things like that, you know. Everything else is just personal. It's just to the point, me what I had to say. So how did, are you the one that wrote all the lyrics? I did, except the way we recorded this record was when we demoed all the vocals, I would read the lyrics to the guys, to, to Boo and Jamie, and when I recorded it, they would give me their input. They would go, go this way or go that way or change this word, you know? So they actually did contribute mm -hmm. somewhat to getting the point across even tighter than it was. Wow. But it is all from me and then through them. Wow. All right, so, I mean, so many great songs on here. They're, they're all great. The most important thing a musician or an artist mm -hmm. can do in general is to find out the truth about themselves and then just let that out. Because to me, um, there's no such thing as, I don't wanna say there's no such thing as creativity, but true art and expression is really just finding a way to say or paint or write or sing what you are naturally, you know, without thinking about it. I think the biggest thing that gets an artist's way is trying to think of a way to be cool or to get it across when all you really have to do is just be you because everybody's unique in their own way. Just express yourself. That's the, the best, the most important thing about a musician. Right. So you're not really getting into character. You're just being another, no another one of your personalities. There's no, there's, <laughs> there's no character on this record. None. And there's no character. We have no character. No. There's no characters on this record. Wow. All right. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me and, and sharing everything that you shared with us. That's really awesome. Right. I'm Brenda Starr for Backstage 360. This is Michael Del Pizzo, Sunflower Dad, coming to your town. <laughs>